The comments and views expressed on The More Show are those of the people that make them and do not necessarily reflect the view of Kevin Moore, The More Show, or this radio station and its affiliate or sponsors. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Broadcasting from the UK and across the world online, you're now watching The More Show and I'm your host, Kevin Moore. Now for the next hour, I'll be covering subjects that will open up your mind and provide you with information you may have never heard before. Now on today's show, I'm about to be joined with my guest, Akiana Kamarik. Now Akiana is an American child prodigy in the fields of art and poetry. Now she was born in 1994, being the third of four children to a Lithuanian mother and an American father. Now her family was atheist and rarely talked about spiritual matters. But one day when Akiana was four years old, she experienced having visions of heavenly and spiritual dimensions. Now because Akiana was homeschooled and had never been out of her parents' sights, they were certain that no one else could have influenced Akiana's sudden visions about the spiritual realms. Now after having these experiences and visions, she started to paint what she saw and she has painted ever since and does so every day. Now she feels that her teacher is God and that she learns by her own mistakes and through observation. Now her original masterpieces have been selling for hundreds of thousands of dollars, which makes her the most successful living visual art prodigy in the world. Now a portion of the money generated from sales is donated to her charities. Now she's also writing poems and plays the piano as well as speaking four languages. Akiana Kamarik, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. It's quite an honor. Thank you. <laughs> it is such an honor to have you on. You have no idea. It really is. Um, and I was scratching my head today thinking, because this, obviously this was a bit of a last minute interview for myself. And I was thinking, right, okay, uh, you, you've done all the normal kind of questions and we're going to start with those as well. But it'd be nice to go in the deep end a little bit, right? Oh, fantastic. I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready. Cool, 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 cool. Okay. Um, well, first of all, j just let, let's start from this. Uh, let's just tell the audience a bit about yourself. Absolutely. My whole life story kind of began around three and a half, four years old. And at the time, my family was not doing too well financially. We grew up in a very rural village in Illinois. And uh, my family was from the very beginning extremely supportive and even when I was three and a half four years old I had this extreme uh, curiosity and with that I started just exploring the world and for some reason at that very age I started receiving very vivid dreams and sometimes I would get these snapshots of really vivid visions so me as you know as a four-year-old Akiana I just had this extreme craving to paint what I saw so I would take anything I have like in the house whether it was like the charcoal from the fireplace and I would just draw whatever I saw and my parents my family started noticing something was stirring inside me this passion started stirring inside me so I began uh, just uh, gradually painting with uh, pastels, then acrylics, and then oils, and roughly around eight and a half, nine years old, uh, Oprah show actually contacted us, and I was invited to be on her show for the first time, and uh, from that point on, my whole entire world changed. I traveled to 36 countries, and I painted over 200 300 actually, 300 pieces of works. I uh, have, am involved, heavily involved with dozens and dozens of charities around the world, and I've published two books since then. And uh, over 300 media outlets covered my story since then. So I am extremely honored, to be honest, to paint because for me, it's just pain is in my blood, and I, no matter how much I try to stop, I just can't. So it's, it's the passion I just uh, 
want to continue. Absolutely. Um, no, absolutely. And so many questions right now, right? <laughs> and we've only got 51 minutes here, so I'm going to try to get some of these, some of these, uh, the main ones here. Um, you really are an inspiration. You really are uh, to a lot of people. Um, first of all, then, what do you think? Let's just get to it. What's, what's the main message in your art, would you say? It's, this is a very tough question because there are, my, each individual painting has a different story, a different message. But if you're talking about as a whole, I think what I tend to lean towards is the message of hope and comfort. And I think I, I really want my paintings to give some sort of comfort and hope to people, whether it's from a different um, outlets of the stories. Because every story in my paintings are different, that speaks differently to people. But in general, I just I want to give hope to, to people. Well, you definitely do do that. I, I'm sure a lot of people have sent in messages from all over the world with with messages of hope and comfort of when they're pit, when your pictures, you know, are in their presence. It's some sort of calming effect. There's some sort of healing that deep down at the soul level that takes place. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I'm gearing towards, and there are multiple stories throughout my whole entire career that people called me in, and um, from you know coming back from the war, or coming coming back from the hospital, and they always email me and call me and say that that particular picture gave them uh, uh, some hope and courage to wake up the next day and be braver and be kinder to people, and I think that's the most important when it comes to art. Absolutely, absolutely, and. I mean, the gift that you've got, I mean, do you ever sit back and just think, well, that's amazing. Have I really done that picture? Was that really me that with my own hands that that created that magnificence? Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your kind words. But, you know, this is the thing when it comes to painting, I completely am engulfed and focused on the painting that I never have the time to even uh, separate myself and and uh, acknowledge own, my own creation that I've done. It's only after I've painted the painting, after months it's done, then I would sit down and actually s see the painting on the wall and think to myself, you know, I can't believe I actually completed this. But at the moment, it's totally, I'm totally engulfed in that creative mode. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you guys it. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, when, you, when you're getting these visions, these downloads, uh, are they quite clear to you? And, and do you still get those kind of visions and downloads? It's, this is a very um, interesting question because it's not one answer I can say because it's a variety of ways I could get inspired and, and could get um, visions or vivid, you know, dreams. It comes to me totally differently in totally different forms and for every single painting. In the beginning of my in my younger years, I have absolutely hands down every day I've started seeing and met, remembering clearly um, five times a day that would happen of uh, my visions. But when I started getting older, my the vision started slowly decreasing, but the outlets are are changing the way I received them receiving them are changing um, but usually it's a progression it's almost like um, I'm a, a director of, of, of the movie and I don't would not know the end until it's finished but I do have a glimpse in the beginning it's usually a snapshot of a very quick snapshot that I, uh, I would remember that's ex yeah yeah absolutely because I watched your video uh, the messenger and, and how that picture came about, and the amount of layers that went into that, and the and the uh, the trust, the trust of of taking off those beautiful images that you had on there, right? But it did. Yes. It turned out right in the end. But you went with your intuition on that on, on in that process. Yes, and I guess um, during my younger years, um, there was a time where um, I still had to develop that patience and that trust in in inside myself and as I'm getting older I'm becoming more and more trusting in, 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 in that inner voice, that inner intuition inside me and, and exactly in the messenger video I wanted to showcase um, the process uh, to people what happened with this particular painting and yes it's it was 
looking back, I would think to myself, why, why did I do that? <laughs> but at the moment, I knew what I had to be done, and I was 100% focused, and it didn't matter if I had to whitewash the whole entire painting. I just needed to be done. Um, every day was new, and I wanted to record it as authentic as I can. Well, it's, I mean, we're just playing the video back now, actually, uh, on the screen. It's a sh shame we can't send the feed to you, but yeah, you've probably seen it a million times anyway. But just that process that we're watching right now, it's, uh, it's, it's really incredible. And, it, and, and to me, it's almost like you're downloading the information. It's almost like, uh, well, I'm going to use the word like channeling the information. And that's just a word, right? Uh, but it's, it's you, have a, you have a connection with something that's greater than yourself, but is is you yes and there's multiple times in my life where I do have like this absolute strong um, connection to this um, invisible probably I don't know how to say portal a, sp a creative portal and I, I do realize the moment I ignore that strong pull is the moment that I would paint something I don't necessarily like or and I would regret I have to trust that pull or else um, the true message will be missing so right now as I'm getting older I'm understanding that it's super important to to trust that and that's what I'm what I'm doing so. oh you are you are you really are and and um when when you say we're trying to describe something that's indescribable here in a sense right there are no words for it yeah so it, it's, it pains me to put words on it but you are do you think you're connecting do you think this is maybe coming from your higher self to be honest there is no such a, no such direct answer but i know it's some it's something much bigger than myself it's something much that I can't even put in a mathematical formula it's you can't really describe it but the best way I could explain it is this absolute warm uh, feeling this this uh, this knowledge that is abundant this creativity is abundant and it's so much just that peace and love and you can't really from the very beginning, ever since I was young, I've always felt this this absolute connection with this higher spiritual um, environment. So I have never lost that connection. I think now it's becoming more and more enhanced since my ability of my techniques are changing. I think now it's um, it's strengthening both my creative side and my spiritual side. Okay, absolutely, 100%, I agree with you. But would you say that you've come from this space that you're tapping into and that you're going to go back to it one day? Could you go there? It's, it's hard to say. I do, real, I do recall multiple um, events during my childhood where I would visit these places right. constantly. And especially with the painting, um, it's titled uh, The Island. And it's a very surreal painting where you would see arches and then there's waterfalls and there's giants in the particular painting. And I do recall even like at 14 years old, I would visit this place constantly. So I am not uh, excluding that whatsoever. I just, there is no 100% answer, but I do know I have visited places multiple times like that. Oh, oh you have. I mean... Uh, uh... Well, okay, what spiritual books, or if any, do have you inspired you, or do, are you reading now, maybe? You know, it's kind of quite embarrassing for me to say this. I haven't read any spiritual books. <laughs> I feel great. But I, it's, it's, I just, I just, um, I just came to this conclusion that uh, spirituality or uh, or believing in something is supposed to be very personal and very intimate, and I don't know if no one can actually teach you that. I think you have to almost teach yourself to open up and, and listen. I think that's kind of what I came to the 
conclusion. Yes, no, 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 absolutely. When I said great, what I meant by that was, well, at least that you've, you know, you're coming up with your own conclusions. So I'll just copy your words there. And when you really reach a pinnacle of spirituality, as in that awakening within yourself, then you're looking for your own answers then. Then no books. And, you know, any truth out there is only the truth to the person that wrote it, as in your truth, as in my truth. But they do exactly. seem to have commonalities that there is a there is a dimension or dimensions. There's a reality that's beyond this. We came from it. We go back to it. We're able to pull into that energy. I mean, look what you're doing. It's not the norm, right? So you, you are a, you're definitely very very connected, um, and that we can learn so much from it to, uh, it, it to make the moment right now even more peaceful as well. And, you know, you're, you're, you're quite right, because I do recall um, that there were uh, an incident when I was uh, five years old where I was physically missing. And during that time, I completely went into this um, area where it was completely, you know, space-like, and there were multiple doors, and there was multiple dimensions. So I do recall wow. actually moving in and out uh, in this type of uh, situation. So there's... I have absolutely no doubt there is so much more that is beyond our imagination. <laughs> well, you're, you're bringing it through in your art. You definitely are. Um, you know, I, people may channel music. People may channel books. People may channel being an artist, as in, a, you know, an, an entertainer or whatever it may be. You know, you know so someone that's working in, in an office. As long as the, I think as long as you're living your passion, that's the most important thing. Absolutely, and I think, uh, to, to, from my experience, I've realized that that actually is the key to happiness and the key to living and the purpose of living is actually every single one of us has this, this unique key that is completely designed differently. And we open to doors that's completely unopen to other people is just to ourselves. So we have to concentrate on strengthening our individuality and our passions to make this world and this reality you know purposeful so that's kind of what i want to showcase with my art as well well you definitely do i mean don't worry about that um you you do um you, you know but I, I feel that you've changed i feel that your truth has changed quite a bit am, am i right it's it's a quite of a long story um what happened when i was younger when i did experience such vivid visions and, and experiences, there was absolutely no mention of the word you know, God or Jesus. There was no mention because I, it wasn't, uh, I, I didn't see that. I, di I didn't hear it. And for 10 years, I just, I was just believing and trusting my own spirituality, but it had no name to it. So when we did come across um, some people and we moved and they started, um, Comparing the two, comparing my spirituality with was was already created. So that's why I, I started putting the names together. And maybe maybe this is the word God. Maybe this is the word Jesus. So it was, and then now I'm kind of going back to my true self that I was when I was four years old and five years old. I'm I want to go back to not the deluded version. Good. I want to go back to the just the, the true version that I've experienced. And I think that to me is more important than um, the, you know, the other people's perspective, in my opinion. Yeah, no, it makes complete, uh, absolute, that's a great place to be, that childlike place. If only, as we get a bit older, we get a bit less childlike sometimes, don't we? And, and, and it, it's that space where magic can happen sometimes. Can't I'm not saying we become irresponsible, right? I'm just saying, you know, it's just, I can see where you're coming from to, to, to go back to that space where you're where you're not putting labels on it almost. Yes, and I think that to me is extremely important is not to put labels on it. Right now, I would you would I would be cons I consider myself a visionary journalist artist because I want to paint everything that I see. And at the time, I did see the face of of the Prince of Peace. I did see that, and I had no you know. Uh, there was no such obligation. It was something I wanted to do. I wanted to paint, and there was uh, monks that I painted. There was um, a whole bunch of um, 
ethnic groups that I painted because I wanted to. I wanted to showcase what I saw what was the truth. And that's kind of what I do through my art. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And, and do you feel that your truth, in, could you feel that truth of oneness between us all, that because you've been to this, these dimensions, or, or one of them maybe, one above where we go to maybe, that you can feel that we're all connected at a much deeper level? Oh, absolutely. And I do, I do notice through, through my years of, of meeting people that a lot of people forget that there is so much more than our reality that we portray in our office, in our schools, in the, and in our everyday life. And I do hope that even writing or music or creating, I almost am 100% positive it is the key to opening our, our spiritual self and to be more open. And I'm almost 1,000% positive that is the way to go. You, you know, some people have I've said to people, you know, maybe I'm a, a soul having a human experience. And someone said to me recently, well, what if your experience having experience? And I was like, wow, that's... That's pretty cool, actually. Experience having experience. What if, what if none of this was real? What if we thought, you know, that we just perceived it as being real, but actually it's not truly who we are. This is just to have an experience down here. And your veil on yourself is a lot less than others, so that you, you have a, a deeper connection back to the source where you come from. Oh, you know, that's a really beautiful point that you just said there, because I do recall um, when I was younger, I would always... You know, I would never share anything to my parents. I would always keep a secret because I'm very, I was very secretive. Yeah. <laughs> but I do recall at times where my mom persuaded for me to, to tell my, my experiences. Right. I, I said it at such an event that um, the place that I came, the place that I was at, it was complete tranquility. It was absolutely not a drop of negativity. But because of that, that environment, the, the people, the, the creatures, the, the subjects that were in that, um, that, that vision want to experience at least a little bit of negativity, at least a little bit of doubt, at least a little bit of, of the opposite. And that's why they, they created a world, the earth. And there are multiple experiences like that that I saw. I don't know if that's 100% real, but I did, I did see that. I don't, but... It, it, our life is full of, of adventures and curiosity it's and it's only a matter of time that we'll figure it out or oh, well <laughs> will we ever i mean what if we're not supposed to what what if you know uh we're supposed to get glimpses so that you know it preserves us to carry on and and, and to be of service but really the bigger true reality no one's ever going to know until you've actually crossed over what what if the reality you're bringing through your paintings is to show us that actually when you do cross over you carry on creating heaven you carry on creating home there's nothing set in stone that when you you become a master manifesto when you cross over so that whatever you want the reality to be whatever you want to keep experiencing you can do so the beautiful pictures that you draw i mean i see heaven in everything you do or i call it the word home i personify heaven for home um what if that's it that we you know it's it's, it's a different message to the pictures to everyone but maybe the message to me is that we carry on creating it Oh, that's a, that's a beautiful perspective, and uh, I just come from my own personal experience, but I do know that heaven is, is all around us, and I absolutely feel that no matter, the, our particular perception of this reality is so minute and so, um, oh, yeah. so insignificant that we have to see the bigger picture, not of this reality, but of multiple realities after this, and uh there is so many outlets and possibilities like what you said that after this we will go and start creating another life or another heaven or for me i absolutely am 100 percent positive that everywhere around us is the clues and heaven is everywhere and i think that we have to just grasp on that um, perspective in my opinion yeah, you know, you know, it, doesn't it all come down to as well? You know, as much as you know, we're trying to figure out what well, we don't, well, I don't just ponder and sit there all the time. You know, where am I going to? What is this reality, right? But um, 
But, you know, it, doesn't it all come down to love in the end as well? Isn't love what emanates from your pictures as well, your, your artistry? There is three things that emanate. It is hope, it is courage, and it is love. And I do understand that we need to have that courage to go through this life, to take that first step in the morning. But we need to have the hope that tomorrow and the next week um, we will uh, persevere and we will prosper. But, we, but in the end, we need that love to confirm our existence, confirm our existence in our earth, um, in our future, in our future life. But I absolutely, hands down, agree that Love is such a, it's such an overused word, but it's such a beautiful, it's, it explains everything in one word at the same time, but I want to accentuate that word love because it's super important, it's super powerful in all languages, in animals, in everything, and in nature. There is, you know, so many tests and scientific um, studies of, you know, uh, plants growing just from the written word written on the pot and if you put a negative word on another pot it would start dying and there's so many things that is beyond our imagination that scientifically we can explain in the future but in the end we probably won't explain everything it has to come it's inside of us that is um the the, the truth, in my opinion. Yes, it is. It, uh, ab absolutely. And it's that, that internal journey. You're dead right. And, you know, um, being of service is one thing that I think is really important. But I'm maybe starting to change my mind that actually you've got to do what you love first. And by doing what you love, it's a natural side effect of being of service. Yeah, that's a very, very beautiful point that you said there. Because I think it's it's a, a domino effect what happens even though um, many people there is a parable I don't I don't recall who said it but it was by the act of doing something even though you don't want to but when you do it and it's completed other things will follow and then and then in the end you'll start liking that and start changing your whole molecular structure will start changing because of that and you will become happier just by doing that so it's it's a, it's a domino effect. Yeah, it is. It is. And um, no matter how you get there, whether you do go out there to, you know, put others first, and that's what makes you feel great to do, great. I just think that whatever we do when we're in our passion, it's, it's just, it emanates off service, just like what your work does. Yeah. It's just <laughs> off service, obviously. Um, you know, it, it, you, you, can't be, you can't be out of alignment with that. Um, obviously, being quite a sensitive person as well, you know, and, and you know having this connection and whatever however you want to call it um how do you feel about the times that we live in now how do you feel about where where america's at now it, you know if we try to bring your work into present moment um can is that possible do you think to, to talk about that i've been asked this question actually back in in a few years ago and they would also ask about politically, political wise, and you know, environmental wise. And to be honest, I don't know if I do have the correct answer to our current situation, our current uh, lifestyle. But if if any, and if I do have any message, I probably don't. I would not say it through words. I would actually use it poetry or art to describe it but as of now I don't know if I have a definite answer of um, our current um, political wise and our current you know environmental wise I don't know if I have a definite answer of a particular change but if I do it would silently and it would speak through my art um, because I do believe that it, art changes people's perspective, even if it does not require words. And I think that's more powerful, in my opinion. Yes. Uh, yeah, the message is in your art. Yeah, and that's a great answer. <laughs> that's a great answer. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, the way I see it is that, well, the way I'm starting to see it is that 
yes, I may not be happy with the way that the world is right now or the world that I was born into, right? I can't change the world, but we can all change ourselves. And we change ourselves by living our passion. And that emanates something greater than anyone ch trying to change the world can because it just ripples out to other people. So I think for me, that's one way of change the world is change yourself. Be the light you want to see. Absolutely. Be, be like that star that you want to shine. And I, it's actually more than ever, we are all living in the best times in the whole history when it comes to human civilization, because, you know, when it comes to survival and, and you know, uh, our day-to-day -day lifestyle it is the best it has ever been. We don't have to, a majority of the population uh, are, have access to um, the ability to start thinking of not only survival, but start creating, start doing something that they love, that music or some writing. And I think right now more than ever, we have to concentrate on that because by doing that, we can eliminate, in my opinion, the, the, um, the, the, the suffering in the world. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And and I mean, look what you're doing with your with the with the charity that you've given away as well. I mean, you would have helped people that you'll never know until you cross over one day and probably have a download and all the people that you've helped out. <laughs> but you've helped out so many people unbeknown to you, and that's and that's again living from that inner gut knowing that that inner space, being true to it. And and I I want to add this as well. You never did any of this for the money. No, actually, I, from the very beginning, I had absolutely no desire in the business aspect of it. I had absolutely no desire on how much the paintings are priced or how the books. And I just did it just because I woke up, just because I was sick and I was on the road. I still woke up because I wanted to paint and draw and write poetry. It's something that I can't really um, stop. And another thing that I can't stop myself is helping people. <laughs> so it just, it's just a both, the best of both worlds that just clash together. <laughs> beautiful. It's so, it's so, so beautiful. And, and I mean, I, are you normally quite a happy person? I mean, I hate, hope these aren't like that bring you down kind of questions. It's just like, you know, people will be looking at this and they'll be like, well, she seems so happy. She's, she's in that alignment. She's in that passion. Does she, how does she always keep it going? Like, you know, I have so many problems in my life. I mean, you, you can resonate a little bit with that, can you? Or I am not excluding myself whatsoever when it comes to there are always every single um, person has their own trials there that they're going through, and, and there's so many hurdles. And I am not denying that there's multiple hurdles in my own life that I'm going through. But I have noticed that, in, well, in general, I'm I love to stay happy because I think that um, actually corresponds with the actions that I'll take. Cool. So, for example, um, I do notice that the moment that there's a problem or a really bad circumstance that happened to me, the moment I start pondering on it, the moment I'll start um, destroying from the inside out of me, and you would start physically start feeling really weak and very vulnerable, and and uh, I just don't, I don't like that feeling of um, of you know, being um, crushed and, and and pounded on. So I just kind of mentally decided to take that first step to overcome that. So I try to look at all situations positively, and hopefully my actions, you know, uh, follow through that. Because I, I don't know. I think that's important. I, I think that's important as well. And do you see that everyone that comes into your life as a teacher to you as well? Did you find that? Oh my goodness! Ever si oh, sorry, the light went out. But <laughs> uh, actually, every single person that I've met in my whole entire life, even though I do not remember their names, I do not remember who what their faces are, but their hearts always speak to me, and their words speak to me, and I think it helps me become who I am today. It's almost like I feel like I'm an atom, and I'm a tr and when other atoms come by, I want to take, you know, and I want to um, be inspired by other people. Yeah. And that's what I'm kind of growing myself. And hopefully other people can grow as well when um, 
ins inspirational people come by. Well, yeah, I mean, look, you've traveled the world and you've still got loads to tra of traveling to do yet. Um, that, that must have changed you. Oh, my goodness. It's been quite of a ride, uh, actually. For four years, I was on the road going from from the whole Europe to the whole Canada and America and Australia. So that, that particular situation changed me because I was always living in a small place in, in, in America and my thinking and my perspective was small. But by traveling and experiencing those cultures that in the languages you couldn't even you know, communicate with, just by experiencing that, it starts changing you mentally and physically and spiritually. You start going on a different level and you start uh, experiencing different experiences and it makes you stronger and, and you grow to a new level. And I'm so thankful. I'm so honored and blessed that I was able to, to, to do that. No, it's a Because that, that, that emanates through my artwork. And my, oh, God, my yeah. Well, it would just make you a richer person, wouldn't it, with all the experiences and, and all the people that you get to meet. It's the people as well that, that get to be in your presence as well. That's, that's what really helps. And um, I, get, I guess you get to appreciate so much of your, your life, your family, just everything that you've got. It's just, it's just great to do that, and it's great you've done that. Do, do you find yourself to be a bit of a perfectionist as well? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm laughing because I was, uh, I'm called the, like, that by my family members. <laughs> I, am a, I am a perfectionist. But... I am a, a clumsy perfectionist. I don't know if that even makes sense <laughs> because um, I I am a perfectionist due, due to the fact I want to stay um, just stay true and po true and correct um, when it comes to painting and uh, but when it comes to family and, and friends and lifestyle I'm at the other side I'm a bit of a clumsy person. I love to uh, just you know, uh, open up a lot. And I guess that's who I am. I'm a, a clumsy perfectionist. <laughs> and I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> I, I, I only say that to you because... Um... I understand that as well a little bit, being the perfectionist type. And I tell you what, I sometimes have to pull back sometimes and realize that the universe teaches me lessons. Actually, it doesn't always need to be so perfect. But yeah, I, because you're a cancer, aren't you? You're a cancer? I am. Yeah. Uh, my birthday was July 9th. Yes, yeah. I'm a cancer. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where the perfectionist comes from a little bit, I think. Yeah, de definitely. Um, you know, there's one thing about you, though, uh, that, that, that's so obvious, just even in this interview. Um, uh, you're very much in the present moment. That's what I feel about you. Do, do you know that you're probably practicing that? Do you feel yourself in that moment? Well, now that you mentioned it, now I'm, now I'm looking back, probably. <laughs> but unconsciously, I probably like to be in the present moment. Because I think, you know, I'm just... By thinking so much uh, of the past experiences, it could also bring you down. It, when you think about the future experiences, it also can bring you down. It's, it's, you're kind of cut in between the double-edged sword. So I think by focusing right now, I think you start putting up a, a shield and you start moving forward. And I think, I think the present is the most beautiful because that's where you communicate with people. That's where you grow. That's where you love. And I think that's. That's that's the gift. I think so. I think so as well. I think you're so right. When you live in the past, you live seem to live in depression. When you live in the future, you're living in worry. And it's like, you know, if you just come back to now, right now, everything's perfect right now. Um, and I think what you also emanate as well is that is that 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 passion to um, be in control of your destiny, that that that, that you are the the master manifesto of exactly where you want to be and where you want to go in this moment right now. And some people have lost that, do you know that? I mean, some people are searching for that. Um, you've, it's not an easy space to get to sometimes. Yes, and I actually, when you, I just listening to what you said, I do recall so many times where I met people where they, they do lose that uh, passion and that, that's some sort of that, that dedication to wake up in the morning to start changing themselves and changing their lifestyle and, and or who they are, and it's 
and it's, and it's a little bit saddening because I know that it is a huge part of the answer uh, to life is to change yourself and change and to become a better person through creativity. So, yeah, I just, I hopefully through my experiences and through my story, I'll, uh, I hopefully I'll be able to inspire people to, to take that chance, to take that first step. Yeah. Um, isn't it true as well, whether you're still doing this, you, you get up really early, don't you? <laughs> yes, actually today, um, it's my normal time that I wake up. At, I woke up at 2.33 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> wow, I'm going to bed at that <laughs> time. <laughs> my brothers go to bed at that time, so always say good night and good morning at the same right, time. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, t- wow. Um, uh, okay, it's, well, I appreciate you taking the time out right now where you would have been painting to do this interview. <laughs> Oh, absolutely, I'm wide awake now, so don't worry. I have a whole day. Uh, we have to... <laughs> well, that's so okay. So two o'clock. Wow, and you get, must get to bed quite early, early then. To <laughs> well, it depends on what you call early, but uh, it's nine o'clock is usually the time. <laughs> oh, okay, but you know that's your rhythm, isn't it? That works for you, and um, <laughs> and that's one. That's really really cool. Um, and I think everyone's got their own way of doing. You know, their own. Um, clock, haven't they? In a sense, their own way of, of uh, yeah. I think I actually discovered this not at the very beginning. I actually discovered this when I was eight years old, and nine years old, when I went to school at the time and experimented. Then I do notice that every single person has a body clock, yeah. and I noticed that when I was waking up early and earlier, I started becoming more and more eager to create, and I it just clicked in me. But on the contrary, my, my acquaintance or my brothers, they would click in their creativity mode at 8 o'clock at night yeah. or 10 o'clock at night. So it, it's super important to listen to that mm. and not go by that school or work from 9 to 5 schedule. I think that's super um, incorrect. <laughs> you have true. to go by your body clock. <laughs> no, that's so true. That's so, we do, though, don't we? Because we, we're told to be this way. We're told to be that way. We're told to think that way. You know what? There's no one in charge of you, really, but you. And, you know, the funny thing is, just speaking to you now, I'm just thinking, wow, actually, the more spiritual people I talk to, a bit of an aha moment here, really, the more I realize that, you know, they are not working to nine to five jobs anymore. They're doing their own thing off the system. They To be the change they want, they couldn't be the change by being part of the system. That, that doesn't mean they don't pay their taxes and all that, but they do They do, do their own thing. And um, I don't know why that's come that's, to me just there, yeah. Oh, that's super beautiful because um, there's it's so hard to see because a lot of the people that I grew up with and they go to universities now and they go to have the other jobs and the moment is when they have that schedule and when the time that they're done they're absolutely they're exhausted and they have no time to do anything um, to better to better themselves or they're too early and they can't get up that early in the morning to to make that happen so it's super messed up with the system right now and I hopefully in the future we'll be able to go around our own personal body clocks and spiritual and mental clocks super important absolutely well this was your lifetime if if you've chosen this life if you came down here and people well, before you came here this is this is just my truth that maybe we um, choose our parents choose our family choose or with free will we can change the path at any time it's like getting a psychic reading they just tell you if you're going to carry on on this path now that's exactly where you're heading to but guess what you've got the free will to change it as well for good or bad so um you know i think you probably you know you've chosen this life to have this experience and what an amazing experience that you're having <laughs> to be honest i am uh very doesn't feel I like it sometimes still... does it <laughs> believe it it's only it was only after three months ago that i started sinking in that really? this is this is the journey that i took and for 15 years it never occurred to me whatsoever 16 years or, or i had absolutely i had absolutely no idea that these things started happening and it, it didn't occur to me it didn't click to me it was only three months ago that i i started noticing that wow this is this is different this is a different experience the feeling so much stronger and different i'm so blessed that 
even the right family, the right environment. And yes, there are so many horrible circumstances that happened to me and my family, but we got through it together. And I think by having that support really, to me, it's uh, the biggest gift that I can have. Yeah, yeah. And also, you know, life's a hill. It's up and down, up and down. Oh. I, I think as long as you're going to be, be in a reality of opposites, it's always going to be like that. So when you say you got through those struggles, thank God you did, right? Which you were destined to anyway. <laughs> but um, maybe they're just meant to be there maybe that you, to not to look at them negatively is maybe the wrong way i know you don't i'm just saying but when people do yes but... absolutely and i think that's the number one key to overcoming is try to look at that as is, is a learning experience many times in the past where my pains got stolen and many times um people you know you know pushed me and my family down for for being a um, you know, a fraud, fake, and it just told Don't worry about you. those types of people. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Years old, you know, sometimes just crushes your 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 system. But for some reason, I had this complete urge to uh, view not don't view those people and those those um, words as you know arrows, but view them as flowers that are coming at you. So try to take those, you know, take those flowers and, and run with it. And may, hopefully they'll make you a better and stronger person. So that's kind of how I view those hurdles. Well, that's a beautiful thing to be able to say, to, to look at people like that, that you can, because let, let's face it, right? When, when someone has been nasty to yourself, if you're going to be horrible back or if you think horrible thoughts, well, guess what? If they're infinite consciousness, which, which we are, if that's the truth, well, you're only being horrible to yourself if everything's one. You can't go to the same problem with the same reaction. You've got to come from, come from love, which you do, which is not always easy. And guess what? When you, when you put your stick down and say, right, well, this is the stance I'm going to come from in life, well, life says, okay, then. There you go. <laughs> There's a test. <laughs> yeah. 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 Everybody comes from different family circumstances, different backgrounds. There's so many people who are unfortunate to grow up in, in areas that um, are, are, um, are, you know, third world countries. So it's, it's very hard to, um, to put a mold on every single person. But, but, but we can always break out of that mold. We could always, it's, it's, we have to be um, our, our, our hero and an enemy at the same time. We have to build up that courage to make ourselves better and, and break through that. Yeah, yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. You know, there is one question I really want to ask you, and it's a bit of a weird question, really. Um, but I've just had a, um, I just had an experience of a regression where, where basically, you know, you get, you get put under hypnosis and you get regressed. And what was really interesting in this experience that I had was I channel as well, and I got to I got to connect with that source I channel, but through someone else, and they got to ask some very profound questions that maybe in a conscious state I wouldn't have ever been able to access. God, it would be interesting if ever you got regressed to see what the results were. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, <laughs> I have never tried that. I do recall going to a Darren Brown show in in, in Scotland, <laughs> but oh, I hopefully no. There's always a possibility. Uh, I would love to just feel that experience. I've never done Obvi that before. Obviously, with a qualified, it's someone that's, that, that's time served doing this. But yeah, but Im imagine what may be your connection, what, what, what you're working with. You, you may be able to get into a space where, even if you're making it all up, it doesn't matter. Um, because uh, if, if it's coming from love, that's the most important thing. But they, we all say we make it up after we come out of those types of um, uh, hypnosis states. But... Yeah, just just what your what what you came here and what your connection was. Wow, it would be, it would be. Well, there's a documentary for you. It would be it would be interesting. Uh, oh, spot <laughs> because we're working on a movie like that. <laughs> hopefully, um, oh yeah, hopefully in the near future, um, a, a feature movie will, will be released regarding that. So I'm super excited. <laughs> I, I think it's really cool that you're, you know, you're who you are and that you're into these subjects. And, you know, I, I, I was going to say when you talked about the haters, uh, you know, um, I, you know, there'll be a time in the future or maybe in times you know, beyond now, this will be looked back on these subjects and, and that the, the answers will have been there all the time. And the cool people would have been the ones that actually, you know, were willing to be of service and stand up and, you know, want to make wanted to 
make this world better, I think, anyway. And that's through art, yes. through yourself, and all sorts of other ways. Yes, so that's the number one key, is not to give on up on other people, but most important, don't give up on yourself. And don't give up on this life, because there's always a purpose in every single one of us, the purpose for a seed and purpose for, you know, an, an animal being born. There's always a purpose, and no matter what it is, we have to fulfill it to the end and fulfill it um, with, with passion. And I absolutely agree. Absolutely, and thank you for sharing that. Now, just I know we're almost at the end here. Fifty-one minutes. We, we, we're just hitting it now. Um, uh, with your, with one of your future goals as well. I don't know if you've done it already, but are you looking to set up some sort of a, a, a school, some sort of a? a I can't think actually, of the word. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. That's actually super uh, uh, a really great question because for the past, ever since I was nine years old, I've always had this dream of opening up a arts and science academy. And I really hope, hopefully in the near future, I'll be able to open such a, a place where it's a, uh, it's an academy that is about producing, it could be about producing, directing movies, it'd be art, sculpting, dance, and everything to do with the arts. And the whole purpose would be through those um, subjects, it will, will be able to unite the world through them. And that was the whole focus of that particular um, academy that I wanted to create. And uh, I hopefully, um, I'll, it will, will be done in the near future. Absolutely. Now, I would have, and thank you for that, and I really pray that that happens for you, and if it's meant to be, it will be. I, I think you're in alignment personally for that to happen. That's much my own personal truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it will. Uh, just, I would normally have ended this and said, oh, you know, um, what's the most important message of your work? But actually, I just want to end it on a quote here, that this is one of yours, and it's so good. And I, that I would have gone on for ages with you because there's so much we could have talked about, and I really appreciate your time. But it says... Being immature speaks of who you were. Being mature speaks of who you're going to be. Who you are is what you become. Thank you. And I, I absolutely believe that. And I, was, I wrote that quote, as I recall, when I was nine years old. When I just finished my first oil painting and I started writing my first book. And I truly believe that we need to, in the end, we really need to start uh, living this life to the fullest, no matter at all cost, with with compassion, with courage, with bravery, most importantly, um, with love. And I, I, I truly believe that. And just for the audience, just uh, your website is. My uh, website is uh, at a k i a n e dot com, akiana dot com, because I just. Uh, redone the whole website so it's very user friendly and we're doing a couple more tweaks in it but uh if if not on my website you could visit me on uh, facebook at akiana's art and you could visit me on instagram as well um akiana's art is the username <laughs> so it's very easy to find me just just type in Akiana anywhere and you probably will, will find me somewhere. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we've been putting your two books on the screen throughout the interview, your website, your artwork as well. All the artwork is available on the web store as well. Uh, those pictures have been purely coming up on the screen and fading out as well. Um, Gosh, I could have I could have gone on for a lot longer. I just want to say, Akiana, just thank you so, so much for joining us today. It's been a complete pleasure. Oh my goodness, thank you so much, Kevin. And it's been such an honor and I had such a great time talking with you and and thank you for allowing me to share my story with everyone. So thank you. Well, we've come to an end on tonight's show. Don't forget that you can listen and watch all our past interviews on the More Shows official YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for new daily shows. You may also find out more on all past and upcoming guests on the show via themoreshow.com and do like us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest updates. So until next time, be safe.